certainly thank everybody for coming today. Uh, thank President Bell uh, and Greg for the opportunity uh, for our players to express uh, their views uh, on how we can affect positive change um, on social issues in our country. You know, it's always been our mission uh, as a coach, and one of the reasons that I love college coaching uh, is to try to elevate uh, the opportunities the players have in our program uh, to have a better chance to be more successful in life because they were involved in the program. Uh, but also use those experiences uh, so that they can actually inspire uh, and elevate other folks uh, so that they have a better chance to be successful, you know, as well. And that's something that I'm very proud of our players uh, for having done. Um, you know, sports has always uh, created an app, a platform uh, for social change. Uh, for each of us involved in sports, I think we have a responsibility and obligation to do that in a responsible way and use our platform in a positive way uh, to try to create uh, social change in positive ways. Um, through this process, I've learned a lot from our players. You know, I, I don't get to see the world through the same lens uh, that a lot of our players do, uh, and I think I respect and appreciate the lens that they see the world in, they live the world in. Um, we had various speakers who I think contributed to that education as well, whether it was Condoleezza Rice, Charles Barkley, Stephen A. Smith, Joey Galloway, you know, Tony Dungy. You know, all those people had uh, an, a, an interesting way that we could all make positive change. Um, so this is what helped me grow in my role as a leader, uh, to listen to the players, to learn from the players, uh, and to give them the opportunity to do things that could impact uh, social change today. So, you know, today I'm like a, a proud parent. Uh, I'm proud of our team. Uh, I'm proud of our messengers over here, and I'm very proud of the message. I'm very proud of uh, All Lives Can't Matter Until Black Lives Matter video that we did early on that when I think had a very positive impact. It was something we did together as a team. This is something that the team decided to do together as a team. So I'm very proud and supportive of what they are trying to say uh, in a peaceful and intelligent way. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be here and I'm very pleased to see all of you here today. Uh, but I'm gonna let them express their views. And uh, Najee Harris is gonna come up and he's gonna start it off. And again, thank you for coming. President, thank you for the opportunity. Hello everyone, for y'all who don't know me, my name is Najee Harris and I'm a student here at the University of Alabama. First and foremost, we as a team want to thank everyone for uniting and standing in solidarity today as, at this peaceful protest. For the past few months have brought a greater focus to issues that have been prevalent in society for years. Black men and women have been the undeserving victims of racism evident in many different ways including police brutality and hate crimes. This is not a problem that will simply come and go in a news cycle. It is not a problem that will eventually dissipate without action. Being here today is a huge step, but I ask you, what's next? For certain, we can't let this momentum die. This has to be an ongoing movement until change happens. We must do more as a team and as individuals to keep this movement going. I'm looking forward to working with programs like the Alberta Head Start Unity Project and Big Brothers Big Sisters to help with matters like this. In addition with working with community programs, we also need to see change in our justice system. What we can do to make sure our justice system is working. We can hold law enforcement accountable. We ask they retrain officers to make sure they do, to make sure they bring unnecessary harm to any unharmed civilian. We respect law enforcement and understand that they have a responsibility to protect and serve. But we will, but we believe it is important they do so in a manner that is fair to all people. We ask our lawmakers to create and enact laws rooted to equity with repercussions to those who don't follow those, who don't follow to those policies. This is a request that cannot just be heard, but must be acted upon. <clears throat> we can support Dr. Taylor and the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion to provide training and education to all students and staffs on campus. This call for change can't end here today. We walk to this schoolhouse door intentionally because while much has changed in the last 57 years, too many things have not. So in the present moment, 
we as student athletes need to play our, our part in bringing out positive change. Not everyone comes from a good background. It is our duty to always be a helping hand to our families and communities. We have to give back and be there for the kids in need, many of whom are just like we are. We need change in our system of law enforcement, we need change in our communities, and we need change in our hearts. This is something that must be done. I challenge athletes to play a bigger role in sports. That role is to give back and acknowledge and acknowledging that we are role models by setting a positive example for young people. The more we give back, we will receive from our communities. Thank you. Good afternoon, coach, players, everyone that's uh, here. Thank you for representing the University of Alabama, and thank you for expressing your support for social justice. I'm very proud of you, and I'm very proud of all of our students who are bringing needed attention to the continued issue of racialized violence in our country. The university leadership, its faculty, its staff, our students stand with our student athletes, and we support your quest for social justice, for equal rights, for equal opportunity, and the equal treatment of all people. Today is important because it demonstrates the seriousness of the issue, but also your passion and your commitment to the issue on this very campus. Just a few weeks ago, we lost a civil rights leader and an American politician, John Lewis, who devoted his life to advance the common good for all of us. Some years ago, I had the opportunity to hear him speak and then to visit with him after that. You know, his message was that each one of us have a role. Each one of us have a responsibility to society. And today is a reminder of that, that we each have a role to play in advancing our campus to be more welcoming, to be more inclusive, to be more fair. We can make a difference as well in advancing our state and our nation. As we've seen through history, one man, or one woman can have a profound impact. A team working together can have an unlimited influence. As a person of more than a few years young, and I say that being kind to myself, as a person of more than a few years young, I know that it starts with the heart. And Najee, that's what you were saying, that it starts with the heart. And I believe what I say is important, but it's also superseded by what's in my heart and what's in your hearts, in the hearts of the people across this country. Because everything else will flow from that. How we act, what we do, what we say, what people see us do and see in our lives. As student athletes for the Crimson Tide, you are in a unique position to serve as role models, but also to share your hearts what's in your hearts and that heart. And I think that is a change agent for this campus. It's a change agent for all of us. I am so very proud of each one of you. Thank you and Roll Tide. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jerez Parks and I attend the University of Alabama just as many as you out here. Um, the difference is every time I walk out of the doors of my house and I get the chance to come back home, I have to thank God tremendously because I knew walking out could be my possible last time of doing so. My life has been in a constant fear of being and knowing that no matter how educated, how intelligent, how skilled I am, that my skin can be a perception changer. We don't want revenge. We just want fairness and equality, which is something we can all achieve by togetherness. Think about how we move as a football team. It takes each and every individual to move as one so we can achieve greatness, championships that we win here at this, at this school that we all love. We all know right from wrong, whether you like it or not, you grow up and you have a gut feeling of feeling this is right, this is wrong. And as you grow, your perception can change based on whether you choose to do with it or not. Let 
I'm sorry. The responsibility of accountability is as strong as ever. I choose to hold myself accountable on a foundation block of togetherness, and this is, and this is something that we will need to do as a unit to move together. The vision will never be the goal. Thank you. So my name is John Hooks. I'm the chief of police here at UA. And before I begin, I just want to say thank you to the, the students, all the athletes, UA football, for the opportunity to be here and stand with you today. Everything that I've heard so far, I hope is echoed in what I'm about to say to you. So um, I do hope that we can achieve some unity and we can continue to work towards a positive goal. I'm honored to be standing alongside Coach Saban, President Bell, Vice President Taylor, and AD Byrne um, to talk about this important issue. You know, I want to start just simply by saying as police chief, I realize what we do on this campus is not something that every agency can do. Um, we are blessed in a lot of ways to be able to make that happen. Um, so I'm not going to speak today about other agencies or what they need to be doing. I can only tell you what we do and what works at the University of Alabama. And, you know, there are three main things that I think are important in the service of our community. Hiring and training the right officers. Definitely monitoring and reviewing work product and build strong community police partnerships. Um, you know, not everyone can be a police officer. It's a tough job. Not everybody is up to that challenge. It was important for us to develop a process that would recruit and be proud of the person that we would be standing next to in uniform. It's difficult to find people who want to do the job and to do it well. But selecting the person who is best candidate to represent us on this campus in our community is, is very difficult, but also extremely important. The first thing that I look for in a candidate when I sit down with them is, are they a good human being? I can teach somebody how to be a police officer. I can't teach you how to be a good person. When I think and I, of, of the people that I would choose to be an officer at UAPD, I look for somebody that I would send to my own house to protect and serve my family. And if I wouldn't send them to my house, I'm not going to send them to yours. Being a good person doesn't mean they're weak or incapable of protecting the community uh, from a dangerous situation when called in to do so. Often the proper training will prepare officers for many types of challenges. Most new officers find out pretty quickly when they get started that what you see on TV isn't reality. 99% of what we do as police officers is talking. We talk to people, we try to help them solve problems and then work our way through those problems together. You know, I've had to be a pastor, a counselor, a mom, a dad, a coach, a protector, a diplomat, a referee, and a friend all in one shift. And, you know, while talking will not always solve every problem, good communication is going to be used more often in any officer's career than the gun on their side. That's something that we all know. UAPD has been accredited since the 90s. After learning more about that process when I became chief, I found this to be particularly valuable. We work with a internationally accredited organization called CALEA, and I have a full-time accreditation manager to oversee our compliance and to basically ensure that we are doing, as a department, what we say we're doing. It's a daunting task. But we're committed to investing in our community's credibility, and at the end, that makes it all worthwhile for us. I heard someone say to me one time, it's hard to hate up close. And that really, really stuck with me. Um, instinctively, we all know this to be true. You treat people you know better than the people you don't. People are more courteous, more respectful to those they know. So why not get to know our community and let them see who we are behind the uniform, behind the badge? And we've done this since the 90s. In the last few years, we've recommitted to our approach to community policing. 
And our goal is to be more than a uniform to you all. And we're blessed enough to have sufficient staffing to where we can walk across campus and meet the students, the faculty, the staff members, the visitors who help us make this a safe environment for everyone. And the goal is to be something more than a police officer in their eyes. You gotta be better than that. We all do. Last thing I'm gonna say is society continues to evolve. We must evolve with it if we're going to be what our communities need us to be. And as I said, I'm in no position to judge anyone else, but I know that as hard as my officers work to serve and protect this great community at the highest possible level, no one is perfect, including me. So we're committed to doing our best every day to reach our goal of perfection. Thank you, Real Tide. Good afternoon, I'm Greg Byrne. I'm the Director of Athletics here at the University of Alabama. I wanna start off by saying how proud we are of our student athletes for their leadership and also express our total support for all of them. As a department, we are committed to a diverse and inclusive environment in what we do on a daily basis. Over the last few months, with the social unrest, I've learned through talking with our student athletes, my colleagues, and many others, there are things that I've never had to think about. Regina, my wife, and I haven't had some talks with our boys that many others in our community have had to have, such as what to do if they got pulled over. I never had to talk to my boys or worry about them getting followed by security while shopping. I never thought it could be dangerous for them to go out for a jog. What so many of us love about athletics is that historically, they bring people together from all different backgrounds. What I want to ask, how can we take all that we love and the support that we feel in our stadiums, on our courts, our fields, in our pools, and bring it together for one another in our daily lives? At the University of Alabama, we can help lead bringing people together, uniting because of our student athletes and the passion that everyone has for our great university. We all have to do better. And that starts right here with me. You never know what one kind gesture will do for someone. If each of us could do just 1% better every day, think about how much that adds up to. We appreciate everyone being here, and thank you for support of our student athletes. Roll Tide. Hello, my name is Chris Owens, and I'm a student athlete at the University of Alabama. I just want you to take a moment to look at the people in front of me. What do you see? People of all races and ethnicities who come together to form a team. In sports, a team is a place where everyone has equal opportunity to be successful, and in order to get things done on the field of play, we must all come together and unite as one. We must understand the mission that we are trying to accomplish and take the necessary steps to reach our goals. Now look at the status of our country. Unlike the example of our team, our country is not a place of equality and unity at the moment. Because of this, we are unable to accomplish the goals of, just, of a just society. I'm only a 22-year-old man, but the things I've seen and experienced in my life have been enough for me to grow tired of the struggles black people have to deal with in this society. As black people, there are cultural norms that we have to learn to stay safe in society. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. Always keep a receipt in case you purchase anything. Why can't we be equal? All we want is to end systemic inequalities and have equal opportunity. Dr. Condoleezza Rice told us that education is a path to power. 
As students on a college campus, we must educate ourselves and use that power to create equal opportunity that we deserve. We must use that power to educate, to set an example for young people so that they understand this way, what this is the way to end systemic inequalities. We must use the power of education so that one day we do not need groups or laws to ensure minorities get treated equally. Equality, that's all we want. Some things about being short, but we work through that. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. G. Christine Taylor, and I serve as the Vice President and Associate Provost for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here. To the athletes, not only do you give me bragging rights with my colleagues in the SEC for what you do on your respective fields, but today you give me bragging rights around what I see for the future of our campus, the future of our nation, the future of our state. You come here today, you have stood tall, and you have demonstrated. As a nation, we are in the midst of trouble. It's not new trouble, it's just highly publicized trouble. Because the trouble for the descendants of Africans began here in 1619. And however, as a child of the 60s, sometimes I get a little disappointed and weary, and I have felt the weariness that you have felt all summer. I'm reminded of that song from the 1960s, and I will say it in its appropriate English. I ain't going to let nothing turn me around. Whether we're talking about George Floyd or the beloved Breonna Taylor, it's difficult, and it's sometimes we find ourselves going into what might be considered a well of despair. But my spirit has been lifted this year as, as I reflected on that love letter that Congressman Lewis wrote to us that was published upon his death. This is the same boy from Troy who went across that bridge almost 50 miles away from here, and he says to us, in the last days and hours of my life, you have inspired and filled me with hope about the next chapter of America. He's saying to you today that you have inspired him and filled him with hope. He further goes on to say, we've got a moral obligation to stand up, to speak, and to speak out. If you see something, say something, or do something. In other words, we cannot, quote, sit on the bench. Congressman Lewis went on to further explain that democracy is not a state, it is an act. And each generation has a part to do. We gotta have fire in the belly to do what's gotta be done. 381 days they stood and walked in Montgomery at the bus boycott. If we imagine this democracy as a football game, we could say that the ball of justice has been fumbled on many occasions. We could also say that in fact there have been penalties. Some people should have been ejected from the game. But we at this point have to act like we're in the fourth quarter. We're down to the last minute. They fumble but somebody's got to retrieve the ball and run like it was yesterday. Finally Congressman Lewis explains that it is ordinary people. He didn't say black people, white people, Asian, gay, straight, Muslim, pro no, no. He said ordinary people. That's me. That's you. With extraordinary vision, we're able to redeem the soul of America. Many of you probably spent some time this weekend looking at a Bozeman movie. I looked at that last section of Black Panther, and he says, and I quote, now more than ever, the illusions of division threaten our very existence. We all know the truth more connects us than separates us, but in times of crisis, wise men build bridges while the foolish build barriers. We must find a way to look after one another as if we're a single tribe. In the words of one of my favorite, Fannie Lou Hamer, who says, nobody's free until we're all free. 
She also said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. So the question now for us is, what are our next steps? I have three I want to offer you. Number one, get woke. Get woke, which means you need information, information to inform the way you act, information to inform the things that you've been doing about voter registration. Second, if you see something, say something. Do so Don't let it pass by. Do, you, you got to do that if we're going to make a difference. Take a personal inventory and ask yourself, have I done all that I could do to make a change? Has my, has my group done all that it can do to make a change? And if not, do something about it. And finally, I want to invite you to a big party that's happening all around the nation on the 3rd of November. It's voting day. Because the policies that have led to the experiences that we have had are set by those who are our elected officials. If you want to see change, the first thing we've got to do is get out and vote. If I were you, I'd tell the people in my family, if you don't show me no voter sticker, don't come for Thanksgiving. Stay home. Get engaged, be involved, because this is your time. This is your time. And if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. I'm encouraged by you. Peace, love, and roll tide. Thank you. Thank you for everybody being here today, our student athletes, the other folks who came along too. And uh, we hope this is a good step for all of us to continue to, to grow and move forward. Roll Tide. <laughs>